Hello, hello, this is Carl Sussman and welcome back to Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here with me today. We are going through listener questions today. Remember, if you have any, you can send them to questions at insurancehour.com. You can also dial pound 250, use keyword insurance. You can get an agent right away. And don't forget, I want to hear from you. I want to be able to answer the questions that you have. So use that email address, use that pound 250 if you need help right away, or call 559-656-0317. If you've missed any part of the show, you can catch us on YouTube, you can catch us as a podcast. You don't want to miss this. It's a lot of good information. You can actually go back, back, back and get more information and more information, more information about insurance than you probably want. But a lot of your questions will be answered there. That's what I'm all about. I really want to be sure that you have the opportunity to have a friend in the business, someone that can help you through and help you understand some of the nuances that really can affect your policy and what you're paying for it. All right, back to these emails. The next email says, my insurance agent won't return my calls. Can I get her in trouble or report her to the police? Wow. Uh, can you get her in trouble? I'm sure you could. Uh, you could certainly, first of all, find out if the agent is employed by somebody else and, and ask to speak to that person if you're not getting a call back. You could also potentially go to the insurance company and say, look, your agent, your representative is not providing me with service. I'm not getting calls back the way I would expect to be. Or if it's really horrific and you really want to make waves, you could go to the State Department of Insurance and tell the agent and, and report the agent as being non-responsive. I, I don't like recommending any of these things, to be honest. I, I don't like to speak ill of anyone that does what I do for a living, right, which is servicing clients for insurance. But like anything else, there are good insurance agents, there are average, and there are not so good. Just like with any other profession, right? There's good doctors, medium, okay doctors, and horrible doctors. Actually, I remember it reminds me that my father told me one time, he said, you know, when you go to medical school, as if I would, when you go to medical school, the, the doctor that graduates with a C still writes MD after their name. And I remember thinking, oh, wow, that's kind of scary, but yes, it's true. So just like anything else, there are good agents, there are bad agents. Try and work with them. I mean, we're all people too. Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they had a fight with their you know, significant other. Who knows? But if you're really, really having trouble, sometimes the best thing to do is really just be honest. Send them an email. Don't chew them out. Don't leave them a vicious voicemail and tell them how miserable and awful they are at their job. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Send them an email or give them a call. Leave them a voicemail and say, hey, look, I've called you a bunch of times. I know you haven't called back. And I'm assuming that there's you know, something going on maybe in your life. But I really have to talk to you. Or, Can you please call me back or have somebody call me back? And I know you shouldn't have to do that. You don't want to do that. You're paying for your premium. I get all that. Just remember, these are people, right? And some are going to be better at it. Some are going to not be as good at it. There is always the possibility that when you find out the reason, if there is a good reason, that they're not calling back, you would be okay with it. Just keep that in mind, all right? Next question. Why can't I get a simple quote for home insurance because I have a few doggies? It's my home I want insured, not my doggies. First of all, thank you so much for saying doggies over and over, not just dogs. That just warms my heart because I'm an absolute dog fanatic myself. And this is a good question, actually. So why is it that the type of dog you have could preclude you from obtaining home insurance? It's a, it's a great question, and it makes a lot of sense because it doesn't, you don't seem to see the connection. So let me try and put that together for you. When you have a dog, there's the potential the dog could cause harm to someone. Let's say bite them. Who knows, right? Now, homeowners policies in general, and we're speaking generically, don't just cover your property. They provide liability insurance. Liability insurance protects you in the event somebody sues you for something. You see where we're going here. So that, that doggy, <laughs> that doggy might bite someone and that person might have an injury and they might sue you. Therefore, the liability insurance on your homeowner's policy potentially would kick in and have to pay for those injuries, pay for those medical bills, the pain and suffering, the trauma, whatever it might be. So it's not, so, it's not exactly that your homeowner's policy would pay for the dog bite, it's that the liability portion within your homeowner's insurance policy could be triggered to pay for that in the event that there's a dog bite claim against you. Now, I understand the thinking of, well, my dog doesn't bite. I get it. 
If you're old enough to remember Inspector Clouseau, I'll tell you the story. It's a great story. So there's this man, and he's standing there with the dog next to him. Another man walks over and says, I'd like to pet your dog. Does your dog bite? And the man looks down at the dog and says, no. The man reaches over, and the dog bites him. And he said, why did you, you told me this dog doesn't bite? Why? What? He says, that's not my dog. I kind of ruined the joke because I said, that dog doesn't bite. He said, you told me your dog doesn't bite. He says, it's not my dog. So I understand the thinking that my dog doesn't bite. I really do. I've had dogs my entire life. You just can't ever know for sure. Just like you can know that your dog could be the sweetest thing in the world, there are some dogs that just tend to have a higher propensity for biting. They just do. And I'm not saying, I'm not calling out any dogs or any particular breeds of dogs and saying, these dogs are trouble, these dogs bite, these dogs, no, I'm not. Because there's no way to really generalize it accurately. However, statistics, it's just math. It's not warm and fuzzy. And if you look at the statistics, there are actuarial numbers, there's real math that you can look at that will show you that certain breeds of dogs just do tend to have more biting claims. It just happens. It certainly might not be your dog, but statistically, it might be the breed of dog you have. Now, there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. First, you can also find out if the insurance carrier is willing to exclude animal liability from your homeowner's policy. Some companies will do that. Similarly, there's actually a bill in the state of California that's being worked through right now that would eliminate an insurance carrier's ability to refuse you based specifically on the breed of dog you have. Now, what that tells me if that bill proceeds through, and I'm actually going to call the assembly person that has that bill, that's sponsoring that bill to see if they'll come on the show and talk, I suspect that if that bill does in fact come to fruition, what it's going to do is the insurance industry is going to say, well, look, if you're not letting us refuse coverage for the homeowner's policy because of the breed of dog, you have to allow us to charge a different price, at least, for that particular breed of dog, which is going to have its own problems and it's going to frustrate a lot of people anyways. However, it's better than not being able to have the option to have your home insured with a particular company just because of the type of dog you have. You follow me? Again, I'm going to reach out to this particular assembly person in California and see if they're interested in coming on the show, talking about their rationale and talking about where they see this going. Because let's face it, if it happens in California, the rest of the country is always watching and they will be looking to see, hmm, should we be doing that as well? Speaking of which, guess what I, what I also have to do as well? Take a quick break. So when we come back, we're going to talk about more of these emails that have come in, answering some more listener questions. Remember, you can send your questions to me at questions at insurancehour.com or call 559-656-0317. We will be right back. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.